you know what? As much as I like the hilltop zone, I don't feel like exploring this level today. What? Wood zone? That right there was a genius transition. Hello, my fellow henchmen! Zekman Awesomeness here. Today, I will be reviewing a Sonic 2 ROM hack titled Sonic 2 The Secret Zones, created by Cabman S5. This hack adds six levels that never made it to Sonic 2's retail version as secret levels. The stock levels have been edited so that falling into where a bottomless pit would normally be would instead send you to one of the following levels. The Rugged Mountains of Rock World The Simon Y Prototypes Wood Zone The Famous Hidden Palace Zone The Bright Desert of the Sand Shower Zone The Merry Wonderland of the Snowy Winter Zone And the Ancestor of Metropolis, known as Cyber City Zone During the development of Sonic 2, there were once plans to have time travel implemented into the game Concept art shows that Sonic has to go through each level in a specified order according to the arrows, warp to another time period, and repeat. And repeat. One more. Done. The time travel idea had been scrapped, but some form of traveling through time was introduced in Sonic the Hedgehog CD. It wasn't the exact same idea as what Sonic 2 initially had in mind, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Admittingly, I have the genuine belief that maintaining your maximum speed for 3 to 5 seconds is sometimes easier said than done. This hack begins in the exact same way as the retail version of Sonic 2 at Emerald Hill Zone. Our blue blur meets Tails for the first time, and they both go on a lengthy adventure to stop Dr. Robotnik from his abuse of the Chaos Emeralds. Sonic 2 was the debut of the most famous Star Wars Battle Station ripoff, the Death Egg. I've always found Emerald Hill to be a real breeze. For most of the times I play this zone, I try to take the upper routes and beat Act 1 in less than 30 seconds max. For Act 2, I tend to do the same thing, except it takes longer because of the boss. Luck wasn't really on my side this time as I ran into the lower routes of Emerald Hill Act 2. Past the poor object placement choice from the final game, I decided to see what's under the lower most waterfall chillin' nearby. And I'm immediately annoyed that the background looks to still be a work in progress. Fortunately, that's my only nitpick about this level. With that being said, I have quite a few good things to say to this zone. First of all, the music choice is decent. Not gonna lie, I think Mystic Cave's two-player theme seems to fit this specific level well. I would have preferred that there be a connection to here from Aquatic Ruin would be better. Food for thought. Second, the foreground looks really nice. The art is mostly borrowed from Mystic Cave, but with rugged edits such as the rails being placed by Grey Slate, and unfortunately the greenery from that dusty hill has turned brown like chocolate and I strongly dislike chocolate. Why? Chocolate is very likely to give me an increase in migraines. I'm chocolate averse. Anyway, I also like the level layout that I was given for this zone. I was able to make it to this boss in under 90 seconds. If I had been in the upper routes, I probably would have made it in under a minute. The boss for this zone is the same as Emerald Hill's boss. This will be quite a pattern for the secret levels that we see after this. After beating the stage, it's off to toward Chemical Plant. My favorite Sonic 2 level. Charging through the chemical plant was smooth sailing as usual. I got through Act 1 in under 45 seconds, which was rare for me to do. And I just took the shortcut in Act 2 to find that the layout was edited a little bit. Nice. I tried to do this trick, whereas with a well-timed jump after going down the long slope in the first loop, Sonic could hop over the second loop and land on top of the third. It's a hard trick to pull off in Sonic 2 regardless of what version I'm playing on, whether it's the original, or the 2013 mobile remake, or maybe Origins. After an attempt or two, I gave up and continued on. Reaching the boss, I found out something that deserves a round of applause. 
the pits that don't lead to secret levels have been blocked off completely. This means that despite falling off the tilting platform while fighting Toxic Eggman, I was able to get back onto the arena since I noticed that the extra platforms blocked off the death pit below. After questioning the random elevator next to the initial spawn, I take the time to appreciate the gold foreground at Casino Night. I went along the lower route and nudged myself into this wall and descended to the bottom of the screen using this elevator. Suddenly, I am warped to the unstable August Alpha iteration of the zone, which looks much neater than the genuine prototype below. The layout is the same despite the different art style, which is nice. Same applies with the boss fight. Next level! You know what? As much as I like the hilltop zone, I don't feel like exploring this level today. What? Wood zone? That right there was a genius transition. Holy smokes, here we are at Wood Zone from the Simon Y prototype of Sonic 2. I'm surprised that this zone had been placed below Hilltop in this app. Emerald Hill's two-player theme is an okay music choice for this level, I must say. Some things I like about this iteration of Wood Zone is the level design. It has new layouts, and they all look really good. I get to enjoy two acts of this woodland sanctuary, which is awesome, because I like to be in woodland areas such as forests. There is one thing that I didn't like about this level. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you. SLICERS! Oh! The Slicers make an appearance and snipe Sonic as usual with their sword. And that really grinds my gears. They appear in the most ridiculous places. These Slicers need to be evicted! Back! The boss of this zone is the same as Hilltop. As there's no lava, spikes make a good substitution. The fire that Eggman spits out behaves the same and sets the arena on fire as usual. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe this zone was set on fire between the time it got scrapped to the final game. That's just my hunch, but oh well. Going into the Mystic Cave zone again, a sense of realization hit me square in the face. The mobile port of Sonic 2 had made a pleasant change to this level. In Act 2, there's normally a pit full of spikes that Sonic can't escape from. The spikes in that pit were removed, and once Sonic fell into the pit again in the mobile port, I was initially wondering if maybe the spike pit was made to be deeper the first time I fell into the pit in the mobile port. But fortunately, I was totally wrong. The pit led me straight to the most famous scrap level known as Hidden Palace Zone. Falling into the spike pit in this hack does this too, which was a genius move pulled off by Mr. Whitehead and his super awesome team well known for rebuilding Sonic CD, Sonic 1, and Sonic 2 to use their own retro engine on mobile phones. They were also responsible for the creation of Sonic Mania, one of my favorite games to date. Mostly everything from the original Hidden Palace Zone is present, but part of the orange in the background is purple for some reason. I like how the vertical wrapping was handled at this level. You break this mysterious emerald object, causing the water to rise, carrying this platform up the steep slope. The water slides function almost identically to the mobile port, which is nice. The level layout beyond where the original stage abruptly ended is superb, too. Reaching the boss, I find that it's identical to Mystic Cave's boss. Overall, it's a solid level out of the order other secret zones added in this hack thus far. Leaving the shiny sanctuary, I felt that Oil Ocean was a decent level to play on. It is in this level where another secret zone can be located. How do I get there? No, not by falling into a pit like the other levels. Going up to this spot in the level, where you have to make a well-timed jump to the left. Unfortunately, I didn't see this new addition at first, and I tried backtracking, but failed. So I had to resort to opening up level select and go back to the start of Oil Ocean Act 1. Restarting the first act again, at the cost of my score being reset. I actually performed the jump this time, and launched myself to the sky from this cannon. Might be just me, but the cannon was quite powerful because it led me straight here to this beautiful desert level. That would have been the first desert level to have in the Sonic series, but it wasn't. This level was rebuilt from the ground up for the 2011 remake of Sonic CD, 
named Desert Dazzle. It was slated to be in the game, but that got cut as well. The layout and art data for Desert Dazzle can be found in the mobile version's files, if I recall correctly. And then from Desert Dazzle, it transformed into Mirage Saloon, the desert level that we actually got, which is nice. The level layout is mediocre and the background is alright, but there's just too many clouds. Speaking of the clouds, they came directly from Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1. Neat, huh? I do like that the Gator Badnik is featured in this level. Better than those stick and slicers, I say. The boss is the same as Oil Ocean, which is alright. Personally, I'm not a fan of the Oil Ocean boss. That's just me being honest. Skipping straight to Sky Chase via level select because Metropolis can eat my shorts, I deliberately jump off the plane. Ho ho ho! The sand shower has gotten festive. Obviously, this level reuses the art from previous Secret Zone, but most of the colors are blue. Snow replaces the sand in the background, and the cacti have been transformed into Christmas trees and presents. The layout for Snowy Winter Zone is rather simple. After a few moments of spreading Christmas cheer throughout the land, I enter the factory sitting out in the open, unguarded. The final secret zone of this hack is rather infamous. I have a few problems about this one. Number one, the slicers are back for revenge! Get them evicted at once! Ah! Number two, this layout is quite dangerous sometimes. Fortunately, it's less atrocious than Metropolis, as this level only contains one single act, like most of the secret zones that came before it. The only thing I liked about this zone was the artwork used to make up the level. The background looks nice, as well as the foreground. You can actually see Eggman in the background too sometimes, which is cool. This zone can actually be entered in a few ways. I could simply fall off the platform next to the Metropolis Act 3 boss, enter the fortress from the Winter Wonderland, or follow Tails as his plane goes down when Wing Fortress begins. Depending on how I enter the zone, the boss is the same as the attendant one from before. For example, if I were to fall off Metropolis, then the Metropolis boss would be there. Since I entered Cyber City from Snowy Winter, the boss is the same as Wing Fortress boss, which is one of my personal least favorite Sonic 2 boss battles. Death Egg now has a short obstacle course, so it's not flat and boring anymore. After a few deaths, I simply threw in the towel because there's no rings. Obvious. Spawn some rings throughout the course, and this level would be much more forgiving. You know, food for thought. Food for thought. Yeah, that's it for the secret zones themselves. I'm gonna try and rank them all now to see which ones are my favorite and which ones are not my style. Here goes! Number 7. Cyber City. It's an okay level with multiple ways to enter the zone, and the art style for the foreground and the background is superb. It's a shame that everything Metropolis Zone is used here, but I suppose it fits like a glove. Just evict the Metropolis Zone enemies and replace them with those that are more forgiving, such as snails, gators, etc. Number 6. Rock World. Being the first secret zone, the layout is pretty decent. The objects used for this level fit really well with the zone. While I do like the foreground, I personally think that the background could use one more polish. Might be just me, but the clouds look weird as the background itself seems to swirl the same way as Mr. Cave's background. Overall, nice level layout, object layout, and foreground, but the background has room for improvement. Number 5, Sand Shower. Personally, I'm not a fan of how you enter the zone from the oil ocean. This level can easily be avoided, and you won't realize that there's a way to leave this zone to access Sand Shower until it's too late. I like the layout, but the background looks a bit too busy for my eyes. There normally isn't a whole lot of clouds formed in this way when playing on desert levels as a whole. The music cho choice is okay, but I personally think that the cabaret song fits better for this zone. Number 4, Wood Zone. While the foreground and background is identical to the Simon Y prototype, which is good, the objects created for this level are decent. Unfortunately, I encountered enemies that I believe shouldn't belong here to begin with, and the boss fight isn't one of my favorites. The music choice is decent too, but I think Metropolis Zone music fits Wood Zone better, 
The song plays for the zone in the early prototype, so bringing the song back to the zone would be a valid idea. Number 3. Hidden Power. While the zone isn't too different, I was surprised with the slight background color change. Not sure why the orange parts changed to purple. Maybe the palette needed to be changed in some way, something else I can't say for sure as to why. The layout is a bit bland, but I like how the vertical wrapping was handled. I may rank this higher if the layout was more diverse. By simply porting the egg MLG tuba boss and the unique level gimmicks from the mobile port. Number 2. Casino Night. Okay, I get it. Casino Night already exists. So why did I rank this if it already exists? Well, there is a secret that changes the level's art style to the beta version. The layout remains the same, which is nice. Maybe that explains why there's random elevators placed at the start of the axe. I'm rather curious about the purpose of those elevators if you can't interact with them. Number 1. Snowy Winter. I love cold weather, and my favorite holiday is Christmas! To have a level filled with holiday cheer, I automatically put Christmas levels on the highest part of any list of mine. Honestly, this zone will be more beautiful if it was snowing. Then if I had a tier list for every classic starter level, including the scrap levels, Snowy Winter would be S++. So that's pretty much it. This hack gave us extra levels to try out, and I found a fair few of them to be replayable as many times as I feel like it. On a scale of 1 to 10, what score would I give Sonic 2 The Secret Zones? Well, I'm going to be generous and give it my final score of... 7! out of 10. The new levels look awesome, but a few of them have room for improvement in some way. I'm always fond of finding and exploring secret levels in games, and I may replay them for my own pleasure if I find them to be enjoyable. Most secret levels are enjoyable in their own way, but there's always room for improvement. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Do you want to see more content in the future? Comment, like, and subscribe. It's that easy! Have a good day or night, depending on your time zone, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!